Hey guys, it's Sonny Webster here. I'm the founder of the Mobility Manual and I've helped 30,000 people worldwide improve their range of motion, which as a result has helped them lift more in their Olympic lifts. And today I'm gonna to be telling you about the secret to lifting heavier, moving faster, and those silky smooth lifts without getting any stronger. Now, the reason why I've had to trick you into this a little bit is because what I'm gonna be discussing with you today isn't always the sexiest part of training. However, like I said, if you can utilize what I'm gonna tell you in this video, I'm gonna give you everything that you need to know to hit a new PB and lift heavier without getting stronger, okay? So, listen up. We're gonna be talking about mobility for Olympic weightlifting. Now, the first thing I wanna do before we really get into talking about what is good mobility? I wanna talk about what is bad mobility and why it causes such an issue when people are getting into Olympic weightlifting. Now, the key thing that I want you to think about is what age are you right now and what stage are you at in your Olympic weightlifting? Now, majority of great weightlifters out there have got into Olympic weightlifting after the, well, before the age of 10 years old or sometimes before the age of 15 years old. Now, if you cast your mind back to thinking about how your body moved when you were 10 to 15 years old, range of motion would have been nothing that would have come into your mind, nor mobility, because it's something that you naturally possess when you're a very young age. If any of you have got kids and you're watching this video and you look at your little kid doing a squat and you're so envious of it, it's because you're supple and you move well at that age. Now, Life happens between that age and where you potentially are now and things tighten up and you lose that range of motion if you're not going through it regularly. I was very fortunate in my weightlifting career after 17 years now to have been consistently moving through those ranges of motion as a weightlifter ever since 11 years old. I've managed to maintain my mobility and strengthen it. However, the majority of people that I now work with or come to me for help with their Olympic lifts don't have the same thing. I've traveled all around the world delivering Olympic weightlifting seminars, and like I said, this is the key thing that people struggle with. So in today's video, like I said, I'm gonna be breaking down how I've helped thousands of people improve their range of motion as a result so that they can lift heavier weights. So let's get back into what is bad mobility and what are the outcomes of having bad mobility. So I wanna first of all talk about shoulders, okay? Shoulders are one of those key areas that you always see people going like, oh, my shoulder hurts when they're Olympic weight of thing. And one of the biggest causes of this is having bad thoracic and bad shoulder range of motion. You see, one of the key things that is caused by having bad shoulder mobility or bad shoulder um, range of motion is when they're overhead, the likelihood is, is that the bar actually drops back in a compromising position. Now, people don't always see this as bad shoulder mobility because they're like, I can get the bar really far back here. But in actual fact, they do this by generally gripping wider on a barbell when they're snatching, which causes, in essence, the arm, the shoulder to roll forward, the lat to disengage, and to get this soft lockout position with the bar super far back behind the head. Whereas in actual fact, when we're trying to lift, we're trying to stay externally rotated here through the shoulder so that the arm can stay in a good lockout position and in turn, the wrist sit back when we're overhead. Being in this bad position here causes a lack of stability when we're overhead with the barbell and puts excessive pressure on the shoulder, which in turn results in the chest dropping in that receiving position. Now, I wanna move on and look a little bit more about trunk or thoracic mobility. So when I think about trunk or thoracic mobility, I think about having good extension here through the spine in order to be able to keep my chest up when I'm Olympic weightlifting. Now, a lot of people that I encounter that have desk jobs or very sedentary jobs where they're not moving a lot, sat over their computers or driving a lot will have bad thoracic mobility. So this could be you if you struggle to get into a solid set position or as when you go down into the bottom of your squat, your back starts to round. Now the reason why this is bad is because if we don't set our spine in a neutral position when we're lifting from the floor or catching overhead, that load is gonna go elsewhere and it'll either go into the shoulders or into the mid spine when we're lifting from the floor, which is why so many people get bad back pain when they're Olympic weightlifting. Okay, so again, that's another flaw of bad range of motion. Now, finally, we're gonna move on and talk about the butt wink. Now, you may have heard the butt wink, and this refers to when you're going below parallel 
in the squat, the lower back rounding. Now there's a few factors that come into play when we talk about butt winking, but one of those key ones is having back tight hips or tight adductors, which doesn't allow you to set the feet wide enough when you squat to sit down in your bottom position and allow enough room for the hips to sit between the ankles in the lowest part of the squat, which in turn causes the lower back to round. Equally, sometimes you'll meet people that have really good squat mobility, but they still butt wink. And this is due to loss of tension when they hit this lowest range of the squat, which can come from a number of different things, but potentially the technique and foot positioning of the way in which they squat. Now, as a result of this, a lot of people that have bad hip mobility or bad ankle mobility will end up catching in a high position. So this is you if you're the type of person that will end up doing a power snatch instead of a full snatch. Now, the issue with power snatching instead of full snatching, although you may be sat and thinking, I can lift heavier on a power than a full snatch, which a lot of people do, is you have to in turn pull the bar higher in order to be able to receive it in a higher position and therefore you won't become the most efficient weightlifter that you can be. So the key thing for me when we're talking about efficiency in Olympic weightlifting is being able to actually catch as deep as we possibly can because that allows us to get into a lower position. What can also happen, which is a big issue for a lot of people, is they develop strength in this highest range of their catch, so from power or above, and they don't strengthen below 90 degrees. Now what happens when you strengthen in this high position and then one day you lift really heavy and it pushes you down lower into this position and over compromises you here is you end up getting injured or something goes bang because you haven't developed strength in this lowest range of the squat which is a huge issue. Now I always liken this to if you imagine you learning to drive a car and in England you can learn to drive in a manual or in an automatic. If you get an automatic license, you can't drive a manual. If you drive a manual, then you can drive automatic too. Same applies to this. If you learn only to power snatch first and you never address doing the full snatch, it makes it very difficult for you to do the full snatch. If you utilize and learn how to do the full snatch first of all, you can then use the power snatch as a great accessory movement for improving your speed in a wad or to improve extension and speed when you're snatching. So think about that for a moment. Always take the time to master the full range of motion first and strengthen through the full range before actually utilizing the condensed versions of the movement like power snatch. Now the final thing that I want to talk about from um, a bad mobility point of view is how the ankle mobility affects torso position. Okay, so if you struggle to have good range of motion with knees tracking over the toes in the bottom position or when you're in your catch for the snatch, what that causes is the hips to move back in order for you to stay balanced, okay? By doing this, this in then turn in causes the chest to drop, so it affects the torso position, which then has a result on the bar position when it's overhead which as you can see, and you'll probably see this if you watch your lifting, is that that bar then ends up being behind the line of the foot. If that bar strays away, the mid, away from the line of here or the width of your foot, you will lose stability or the pressure will go on the shoulders. So actually being able to sit in a good position with the torso upright and keep the bar over the middle foot when you achieve your bottom position is crucial. So that highlights probably a couple of the key points for me when it comes to bad mobility. I'm sure some of them um, have hit a bit of a pain point with you as areas that you struggle with. But now I want to talk about, and I'll come over this side of the board, what good mobility looks like and how if we address this and get into these positions, you are going to lift heavier. So the first thing that we're going to address is wrist. Now the reason why having good range of motion or flexion and extension in the wrist is really important is because when we're overhead with the barbell, we need to be able to let the wrist sit back in order to get in a good lockout position. Imagine if you were doing a handstand right and you couldn't hold your hand flat on the floor, how much weaker you would be compared to if you were able to, um, or if you were only doing it like this, you wouldn't be able to stay upright in your overhead position when you're hand standing. So making sure that we've got good range of motion there is really key. 
Now I've drawn these pictures, I'm terrible at drawing, but if we were to look at a clean as well, if we don't have good range of motion in the wrist for our catch, then the likelihood is that we're gonna be catching the bar in the fingertips, which is gonna cause the bar to crash on us. So good range of motion in the wrist is key for overhead positioning, but also front rack positioning when we're snatching. Now, good range of motion plays a huge part in us being able to sit with a narrower grip when we're overhead. The narrower we can have our grip when we're lifting, and there's a compromise between these two positions, will allow us to be more stable, purely on the basis that we're bringing the hands slightly closer to our center of gravity. A lot of people, when they first get into Olympic weightlifting, will grip wide on the bar because their mobility won't allow them, and as a compromise, they lose stability when they're in the overhead position. So good range of motion in the shoulders, really key for that. In addition, having good range of motion in the shoulder here will allow us to actually keep the elbows higher when we're receiving the bar in the catch of the clean. So that plays a huge part in the clean and jerk also, or even when you're front squatting, to keep good distance between the knees and the elbows, which can, optimal, which can sometimes lead an injury if these contact when we're catching in the clean. The next thing that we're gonna talk about when I think about good mobility and why it's so important for Olympic weightlifting is in the spine, the back, or the thoracic. Having good thoracic extension and being able to set the back in a neutral position when we're Olympic weightlifting will take the load off the back and allow you to use the legs. Now, as we mentioned earlier when we're talking about bad mobility, a huge factor in being able to sit nice and upright in this position is ankle mobility. So being able to track with the knees over the toes in our bottom position here will in turn allow the hips to sit between the ankles in the bottom position and us to sit upright here, which in turn allows us to sit deeper in our bottom position of the squat, the snatch, and the clean, which as I mentioned to you earlier will then in turn mean that we don't need to pull the bar so high in order to be able to get into a good receiving position. So for example for this, if we're hitting our top position for the snatch, the height in which we need to pull the bar is only as high as it would be in the bottom position of our overhead squat and equally the same when we're doing the clean. So that's a really key thing for me in order to be able to be efficient and execute good technique in the Olympic lifts. Ultimately, if you can get comfortable in this position, you will move faster into it. Anything that's comfortable is easy to get into. Anything that's an uncomfortable position, think of you jumping into a fire versus into a cloud of pillows, you're gonna to wanna to move quicker that way than you are that way. So making this position as comfortable as possible and then developing stability in it is key. The final thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to having good stability, and we kind of drew this picture on here as well, is like I said, being able to achieve this position and stay stacked over all of these key joints means that the load then goes through the middle of the foot, which is gonna give us a great level of stability. And the way I look at improving mobility is to first achieve the full range of motion, especially before we start loading through it, so that when, when we do load through this movement, we develop strength and stability through the full range of motion which is gonna then, in turn, lead to us having better technique. Now, achieving that better technique is crucial um, to be able to be more efficient in the Olympic lifts. The final thing that good mobility, or second thing that good mobility allows us to do, is like I said, strengthen through this full range of motion. So you'll, in turn, by having better mobility, be able to get bigger strength gains than you would be if you're working through a shorter range of motion. And finally, as I've highlighted here, being in a good position with the weight loaded through the, all of the key joints when we're lifting overhead will reduce the risk of injury and take any excess pressure off any joints that we don't need to be. So if this has hit a few pain points, I now wanna tell you what it is that you actually need to do in order to improve your range of motion. Now for me, it's extremely important when we think about mobility that we're mobilizing pre-training. It's important to increase the range of motion, as I mentioned here, before we strengthen it. So sticking the mobility in before you train is a great way to do it. Now, I normally suggest mobilizing for 15 to 20 minutes before training. Now, for you, if that's unattainable because you're in a CrossFit class, this is something that you have to do before you get to the gym or a part of your morning routine. It's extremely crucial that if you want to progress in your mobility, that you're consistent with it 
day after day. This isn't something that you can just do once a week and hope to improve. No, you've got to be consistent with it to at least first increase the range of motion and then you can actually start not having to do it every day but being a little bit less consistent with it. Now what I do when I put together a mobility session is I pick an exercise from each of the key joints which is ankles, hips, thoracic, shoulders and or wrists and build that into four exercises and run through them three times each, okay? Using different rep ranges. Now, each of these exercises are different, very, very, of different intensities as well, so that's always good to remember. Some exercises are a lot more low level, some exercises are loaded and more specific to the Olympic weightlifting movements, which are the ones that actually get you results. And that's where what I do from a mobility standpoint really differs from a lot of other mobility stuff that's out there because it is sport specific and specific to this movement that we want to be mobile in. And the fact that when we're weightlifting, we want to be mobile under load. So adding in a resistance level that actually reflects that is extremely important when we're mobilizing for the sport. Now, the key thing that prevents people from actually executing exactly what I've told you will help you improve your mobility is the accountability side of it. People get a week into doing mobility and go, nah, I can't be fucked because it's not as sexy as other things that people do in their training. But trust me, if you stay, if you stay consistent with what you're doing, you will see good results. Which is why I wanna tell you about now my mobility manual for Olympic weightlifting. This is a sport specific protocol designed specifically to improve mobility for Olympic weightlifting. Like I said, specifying for sport is extremely important when we're mobilizing. And I do exactly that. I provide you with a training program every single day for 40 days in a nice fancy app as well so that you can track your progress as you're going. In addition to this, I also run you through an assessment period first using the app as well or out the app, whatever is best for you, so that you can see where your mobility is at at the start and then retest it again at the 40 day mark to see the progress you've made. Being able to track your progress throughout the period of time that you're running through the program helps you stay accountable to sticking to the plan. You can even set up to send yourself notifications as you're going through it to remind you to do it at a key point every single day. Now, in addition to this, you also get access to my private Facebook community of other like-minded individuals that are increasing their range of motion for sport, but also to be able to access our coaches that can help ask any questions about any of the exercises that you're doing if you need further help. So if you want to take advantage of a special offer that I'm offering to you today to improve your range of motion, your mobility, and get access to the 40-day protocol, then you can hit the link below this video. If you do not increase your range of motion in the 40 days, I offer a 100% money-back guarantee. So go ahead and take advantage of this offer, increase your range of motion so you can have better technique, lift heavier, strengthen through a full range of motion, and of course, reduce your risk of injury. Take care, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video.